Welcome to Cocktails in the War Room. What's going on, everybody? It's Mistress Carrie, and oh my God, I literally, I apologize for being a couple minutes late for the show today. Um, I literally made it in here, like skidding on two wheels. Wait until you hear the story about how I've spent my day. Oh my God. First of all, welcome to Cocktails in the War Room. Uh, it's Mistress Carrie. Thank you guys for joining me. We do this each and every Tuesday night at 8.30, a tradition we started back on March 14th, which was episode one of Cocktails in the War Room. We did 81 nights in a row as a support group for each other, and then Cocktails in the War Room became the show that we know it to be today, which is a weekly show where we get together to talk about current events and music and uh, basically whatever else we want to talk about. So we got music headlines coming up tonight. Um podcast updates. We got to talk about last week's episode. We got to talk about what's going on with mistresscarry.com and the online store. We're going to go through the mail call. And I will warn you guys that at any moment, uh, Wednesday is going to come barreling in here. She is spending some quality time with Grammy, who is outside uh, right now running Wednesday around. And when Wednesday is done, probably shitting on my lawn, she will be back in here so I can turn the pug cam on. So what's going on, Jerry? How are you guys? Thank you guys for hanging out with me every Tuesday night. Welcome to the War Room family. That is what uh, all of the members of the War Room that have been here since the beginning named themselves. And the first thing I want to do tonight before I tell you what the hell I have been up to today is... Um, Find out if anybody's new to the war room tonight. So if you have never joined me for cocktails in the war room, let us know in the comments. We're always curious when new people uh, join us here in the war room. I'm trying to open up the comment section a little bit bigger for me. Um, so if you're new to the war room, let us know so that we can all welcome you properly. And uh, as always, a cocktail cheers to you guys. You made it through another week. So cheers. I needed that. Okay. So I, for anybody that has a mistress carry backstage pass, which we will talk about in a little while, um, they know how hard I have been working on mistresscarry.com, which I am hoping to launch very, very soon. And we'll talk about the website in a little while. Um, so I have been so crazy busy trying to get, um, th stuff done, not only for the podcast episode this week, but to get, uh, mistresscarry.com up and running. And of course, there's the holiday on Thursday. And I don't know what you guys are doing for Thanksgiving. We talked about it a little bit on last week's episode. But this year, rather than get my whole family together, it's just going to be the immediate family that's in my COVID bubble, as everybody's been calling it. So this afternoon, I went up to run all of my errands. And even though we're not having the big giant family extravaganza, welcome, Kim. Who else is new? Uh, Lynn is new. Uh, welcome to the crazy family, says Ash. Welcome to you guys that are new to the war room. This is what we do every Tuesday nights. So you get the kids to bed. You had a hard day at work. Pour yourself a drink. Hang out with us. You can make me really big on your smart TV or you can watch on your phone or your tablet, however it is that you want to watch it. But um, this is a live and interactive show every Tuesday night right here on my Facebook page. And I also want to let new people know that the episodes get posted after the fact on my YouTube channel as well. So if you have friends that want to get involved with The War Room and want to see what's going on but they don't have Facebook, can always go to the official Mistress Carrie YouTube channel and all of the previous episodes are listed up there as well. Okay, so I went to go and do all of my Thanksgiving running around today. And I always go to the same orchard, a um, little plug for Man's Orchard up in Methuen because their pies are amazing. And then I always make a stop over at Piero's Bakery, another little plug for those guys because they have fantastic, these, oh, these raspberry bow tie cookies that they make there. I grew up in my grandfather's Italian bakery. And when you find a family owned Italian bakery, that's kind of like the one you grew up in. It's a godsend. And then the other thing I did um, is I went to the turkey farm to get my turkey. So I want to say hi to the incredibly overworked and extremely tired staff of Raymond's Turkey Farm uh, up in Methuen because that's where I went to go get my turkey today. Um, I had to wait two hours outside in the cold in line to pick up my turkey, 
because um, that's how many people were picking up their turkeys today. And by the time I ran all of my errands and waited in line, welcome, Richie. There's new people checking in all the time. Uh, Paula says, love man's orchard. Yeah, it's so good, right? By the time I was able to get my turkey, I was waiting in line, waiting in line, and I'm looking at my watch, and I'm like, I got to make it back for the war room. I got to make it back for the war room. I almost thought about leaving and going back tomorrow because I was afraid I was going to miss you guys. I got my turkey. So here's the worst part. You know when you wait in line for a really long time at a place, you start making small talk with the people you're in line with, and you become friends, kind of like line friends, line buddies. Remember when you used to wait outside in line for concert tickets? Kind of like that. So I become friends with these people that, you know, we're making idle chit chat and whatever with the people that I'm in line with. So I go up to Raymond's to get my turkey all the time. And so we wait in line for almost two hours to get our turkeys and everybody's miserable together, but everybody was being super cool and we're freezing cold and we finally get to the line and the COVID separation and all of that stuff. And I get up to the door and the dude at Raymond's, even though I got the mask on, he still saw my hair and he's like, Mistress Carrie, we told you last year just to come to the back door. Why'd you wait in that line? I should have gone to the back door. Sorry, guys. But I waited in line. So for two hours, I waited in line for my turkey, which I did get, so I don't have to go back tomorrow. But I literally came running in the house. Wednesday, come here. Come here. Come here so I could turn the pug cam on. Here she is. Let me turn the pug cam on for anybody that's new to the war room. This is Wednesday. Come here. Come say hi to everybody. See, you got your own. Come here. Wednesday, come over here. Come on. Come here. Come and see me. Rah. Oh, there she goes. All right. She'll be back. That's Wednesday for anybody that's new. She gets her own camera because, well, why wouldn't she? Um, so I literally made it back in just enough time to run into the war room, throw the gear together. So if there's any glitches, technically you guys got to let me know because I threw the show together tonight at the last minute because I was waiting in line for my Turkey all day. So, um, what's up to everybody at Raymond's? I'm sorry that I didn't go to the back door. And the people that I was in line with were looking at me like, you motherfucker, you didn't have to wait in this line and you did anyway. And I was like, yeah, I'm kind of an idiot right now. So cheers to all of my line buddies that I waited out with for a turkey for today. Ooh. Hey, turn that down in there. Mom's visiting. Blaring the TV like she doesn't know what's going on in here. All right, so... That's what was going on uh, today, which is why I'm a little discombobulated. So I appreciate you guys. Um, looks good so far. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate it. Uh, so that's why I was a couple minutes late coming in here and why things have been so insane today is because, yes, Eric, the back door. Um, so that's why I'm a little disorganized. So I truly, truly apologize. But I have a ton of awesome stuff to talk to you guys about some really cool announcements. We got to talk about the podcast. It's a full show. I hope you guys are ready. And I got something really cool in the mail call this week as well. So um, lots and lots and lots of stuff to talk about. So until Wednesday comes back and I put the pug cam back on, let's talk about uh, last week's episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast. If you have not checked out an episode of the podcast yet, this is one you should totally check out. Episode 24 featured Morgan Rose from Seven Dust. And as I said at the beginning of the episode, um, we had some technical difficulties because the cable company was doing work on the lines on the street and they kept unplugging my internet. And so he and I, the interview's almost three hours long, but it took almost eight hours to record because they kept disconnecting um, my internet and he would get disconnected from me and then I would text him and be like, those motherfuckers. And he was just laughing. And so uh, when you go and you listen to the episode, you hear exactly how candid Morgan was uh, in this episode. Elsa says, it was amazing. Um, Greetings from Holyoke, says Jim. Uh, no, we're not bringing mom in here. You guys can stop asking. We're not even opening that can of worms. Um 
So let's see. Danielle says, this podcast was my favorite of all time. I can't believe how candid and amazing the interview was. Morgan is unbelievable. And he's always been someone, uh, for better or worse, that really didn't have a filter. And I've known him for a really long time. And to hear him talk about the things that he overcame from his childhood and to hear him so candidly talk about his struggles with suicidal thoughts and depression and addiction. Um, Donna says it was great. It was so candid. I had chills at some parts. Um, I mean, there were some moments in this interview that when Morgan was talking about some of the stuff, I didn't even know these things about him. And the fact that he was so open and honest and raw about his struggles and the work that he has had to do to overcome some of these things, I was really grateful that he was so willing to talk about this stuff because I really look at that podcast episode as something that even if you are not, I'm going to move the screen down a little bit. Um, even if you're not a diehard Seven Dust fan, Maybe you don't know that much about the band, which you can learn a lot if you listen to the corresponding podcast, I mean, the playlist from episode 24. I think there were lessons to be learned from Morgan, regardless of whether or not you like Seven Dust, whether or not you like rock music at all. These were life lessons. Um, and I just, I really wanted this episode to be something that that people really were able to absorb when you're having conversations with someone about their lowest point in their life and how they needed to ask for help and how their parents basically had to be there to pick them up at their darkest moment and basically save their life. It gives a whole new perspective to um, all of the different issues that we've had with losing some of our favorite musicians. And I thought it was really interesting to hear him talk about what was going through his head at the time, because it might help other people avoid getting to that lowest point, And it might also help other people be able to spot someone else in their lowest point and to kind of understand what it is that that person is thinking and what they're going through. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, it hit home, says Eric. Um, it just, it was, it, I mean, there were points where Morgan and I were talking and I was just like, oh my God, are you serious right now? And the fact that I didn't know in all the years that I've known him that he was struggling that way also made me feel really bad because we've been friends for so long. So um, Danielle says a lot of things in that podcast will help a lot of people. Um, and that's why I'm really hoping that if you have not listened to this episode, um, obviously if there's somebody that, you know, that loves seven dust, pass the episode along, but also if you know somebody that has struggled with depression or addiction or suicidal thoughts in the past, pass the episode to them as well, because I think there's, there's a lot of lessons that can be learned. And also if nothing else, it makes you feel like you're not crazy and that other people that you would perceive as having a perfect life are also struggling as well. And, um, it, it just, it was very powerful for me and I couldn't believe that there wasn't anything after we had that conversation that Morgan was like, I need you to edit that out. Or can you please not put that in there? And he didn't do that at all. As a matter of fact, other than the internet disruptions, that episode is exactly how we recorded it. Um, I didn't want to cut anything out of it because it was too powerful. So um, for, uh, Joseph says, hello from Rhode Island. First time here. Happy Turkey Day, everybody. What's up, Joseph from Rhode Island? Welcome to Cocktails in the War Room. This is what we do. We sit around, talk, keep the comments coming. Um, sometimes they're hard for me to read because they go by so fast. But um, like Michael says, I'm struggling with depression right now. Michael, listen to this podcast. There are a few 
episodes of the podcast that deal with uh, depression and mental illness and seeking help, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, or just post-traumatic stress in general. Um, episode four is like that as well um, with my friend John Hill, who was um, part of the Battle of Cop Keating that the movie The Outpost was based off of. He was very candid about seeking um, his own uh, mental health treatment after he returned from Afghanistan. Uh, episode number three with Tommy Vex from Bad Wolves. He and I had a long conversation about that stuff as well. Sorry, face police. I'm touching my nose. Um, being outside in the cold all afternoon, I had the worst runny nose. And everybody's so paranoid about COVID that if you sniffle or sneeze or wipe your nose or anything, everybody's like, you have it. But I just have a little bit of a runny nose because I was outside in the cold. Mm. Um, Penny says the empty room with what he saw was heartbreaking. I've been there. Thank God he had his mom. I totally agree, Penny. And one of the reasons why I reacted the way that I did, Morgan in the episode talks about being in his empty house and being drunk and alone after a bad breakup. And there was nothing in the house. And he said that he rec he saw an exercise band, you know, those elastic rubberized like exercise workout bands. And what struck me is I believe that's what Chris Cornell used when he died. And it broke my heart when Morgan said that because it's like, oh my God, someone else that we loved so much saw in that same moment, that same object. And we know what happened with Chris Cornell. And so, um, to hear Morgan talk so openly about that. Um, and the fact that he was able to, after everything that he had been through growing up with his family and his parents, that he called his mom and that she was there for him and she helped to get him help because he needed it and asked for it. It's just really powerful lesson. So like I said, if you guys have not, um, listened to this episode of the podcast yet, um, please do. Morgan also, as you hear in the episode, uh, agreed to come in the war room. So we're going to get that scheduled as well because um, I want you guys to be able to see the candid, amazing guy up close that um, I talked to in the podcast episode and that friend that I've known for years. So be on the lookout for Morgan joining us in the war room. Um, and I have a special announcement about somebody that's joining us in the war room next week coming up. So super excited about that. So that was episode 24, which brings us to episode 25 of the Mistress Carrie podcast that goes live at midnight tonight. And episode 25 is Scruffy Wallace, who you may or may not know, um, he was, for a long time, the tin whistle and bagpipe player in the Dropkick Murphys. Scruffy is also a decorated Canadian Army combat veteran. He uh, is a professional bagpipe player since leaving the Dropkick Murphys for reasons that he explains in this week's podcast episode. He has also started his own bagpiping business where he plays weddings and funerals and functions and special events. And uh, as a matter of fact, wait this way, um, I always get confused with the, one of these days I'm going to get these directions right. Uh, that is actually a picture from my wedding because Scruffy played the bagpipes at my wedding, uh, which was his wedding gift to me and to my husband. And it was amazing. Um, Scruffy is also starting a new band called the Shadows of Boston, which is a uh, Boston based Celtic punk band, and you can expect new music from those guys coming in 2021. And so Scruffy came on um, the podcast this week with one of the other bagpipers, because there are multiple bagpipe players in the shadows of Boston, um, a combat veteran, a Marine combat veteran named uh, Denny Upton, who also joined Scruffy on this week's episode. And they talked a lot about a lot of things. If you've ever wondered how to learn how to play the bagpipes, they break down how the bagpipes work, the different parts of the bagpipes. They talk about the history of the uniforms and the tartans. 
Um, Scruffy actually, when he was in the Canadian army, one of, he had a dual MOS and one of his MOS is, um, was actually playing the bagpipes in the Canadian army along with being a machine gunner. And so his, I mean, he's played for the queen. Um, so his perspective on a lot of that stuff, um, he was in Sarajevo, um, in 1992, I believe, which is where he was deployed. He talks a lot about that. Um, it's one of those, um, it's, it's one of those conflicts and wars that you don't hear a lot about. And his perspective was really interesting. Um, also, you know, the perspective of someone that didn't move to Boston until he was 29 and talking about the city and his love for the city. And then all of the amazing things that he got to do as a member of the Dropkick Murphys. Um, so everything from uh, The Departed to the World Series championships and, you know, hanging out with Big Poppy and his World Series ring. And he's just got so many amazing stories in all of the places around the world that he's traveled. And then to also hear um, him talking about the reintegration uh, coming home from war. And one of the really cool things that him and Denny both talk about in this episode is the role of music, that it not only played in their upbringing and their return home from overseas, but also the role that it plays with their kids, um, and especially through COVID. And so I am really excited for you guys to hear um, episode 25. I've known Scruffy for years and I think that you guys are going to find this really, really interesting. He even tells the story about why it is that uh, bagpipers don't wear anything under their kilts, which I thought was fascinating if Scruffy's story is in fact true, which I don't know if it is or not. Um, so super excited about uh, episode 25. I think you guys are going to love it. If you love punk music, if you love Boston, if you love the Dropkick Murphys, if you love the bagpipes, uh, if you are a military veteran, there's a little bit of everything in this week's episode. And I think you guys are going to, um, I think you guys are going to love it. So um, Keith says, my friends and I snuck backstage at a Dropkick's rancid concert in Brockton ended up hanging out with both bands and I'm sure they were super cool. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, you guys are talking about, I'm I was trying to figure out what you guys are talking about. So your MOS is your military occupation. It's your job. And so military MOS is whether you're infantry or whatever it is, they come with a number. And so a lot of veterans will get their MOS number tattooed on them or they refer to themselves when they get around other people with the same MOS. Um, they could be mortarmen, they could, it, whatever it is that your job was in the military. Um, and actually, uh, because I know so many people listen to the podcast and join us here in the war room that really don't have a lot of knowledge about uh, the inner workings of the military and a lot of the terminology, um, Scruffy breaks that down for you in this week's episode as well. So, and this week, once again, is sponsored by Digital Federal Credit Union. Uh, DCU.org is where you can find them. Super excited to have them be official sponsors of the podcast and also Latini Creative Solutions at latinicreative.com. So I want to thank both of them for sponsoring episode 25 of the Mistress Carrie podcast, which launches at midnight. Um, so you guys, uh, you guys are starting to put your MOSs up there. So Travis says, uh, uh, 7222 Hawk missile systems operator. Um, if you guys are veterans or if you're currently in the military for everyone else that's in the war room, can you put your MOS number and what it is and your branch of service so that people can kind of see all of the different MOSs that you guys have had? Because I know that there's a lot of veterans that hang out with us in the war room every week. And I think it's always really interesting for civilians like myself to learn about all of the different jobs and all of the different things that you guys have done in service to our country. And because a lot of people don't understand a lot of these classifications, um, put them in there. Jonathan, are we going to get Sully on before the end of the year? Jonathan, I texted him today. 
and I'm working on getting it scheduled. So working on it, working on it, working on it. But Sully and I were actually texting today. I believe he just got home from all of the dates he was playing with Aaron Lewis. So we are, um, uh, so there you go. Uh, so uh, Gold Star son, uh, Richard Fitz Jr. is asking what the MOS is for Army Engineer. That's what his father was. Um, so if you guys can help him out, 31 Bravo Army, says Jeff. Army 27 Delta, um, legal specialist and paralegal, says Brianna. Um, so keep them coming. Put your MOSs in there because I think it's really interesting. I love reading them and I love knowing. Um, let's see. Uh, Eric says 88 Mike Transportation. Um, 8151. Uh, Machine Gunner says Michael Cole. Sorry, these things come by really, really fast on the screen. So keep the MOSs coming. I love it. Mm. Okay. Speaking of the podcast, if you subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast, one of the other things that you guys will get um, is alerted every morning that there is a new episode of the podcast. It's a bonus episode and we call it the sit rep or the situation report. Monday through Friday, in under five minutes, I run down all of your rock news, music headlines, entertainment updates. So if you subscribe to the podcast, you get all the sit reps as well. And there's a lot of stuff going on in music. There's a lot of streaming concerts. Um, a lot of bands are making announcements about actual shows um, that are getting scheduled. A lot of the big festivals are still on track for next year. And so the sit rep kind of, you know, in the five minutes you sit at the drive through in the morning on your way to work, you can get dialed in with all of your music news and everything going on. So um, subscribe to the podcast, which you can do in any of these places, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can just subscribe. Apple, Google, Spotify, radio.com, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Deezer, Overcast, TuneIn, Pandora, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Amazon, Geo Savan, and Ghana in India, and also Player FM. And that's just the beginning. The podcast is going to expand in a major way in early 2021. And I will fill you guys in on that uh, very shortly. So, um, so listen to the, to the sit rep as well. And if you got music friends out there, you know, fellow AAF family members that miss me on the radio, that miss high note, low note, that miss all of the new bands, miss all of that stuff. You're still getting all of it. It's all right here. So subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you will be in good company because there are now 95 countries that are part of the podcast fam. 95 countries listening to the Mistress Carrie podcast and counting. So um, it grows all the time. So keep sharing it. Okay. Um, before I hit the wrong button. Um, told you guys I was discombobulated tonight. Before we get into your music headlines and the mail call and everything, I want to tell you guys about who is coming on the podcast next week. I mean, sorry, who's coming in the war room next week. So next Tuesday night, we are going to have our first cocktails in the war room sampling session. And I am honored to tell you that next week, the master distiller of Metallica's blackened whiskey, Rob Dietrich, is coming in the war room live to talk about Metallica's whiskey, to talk about the distillery process uh, or the distilling process, to talk about the distillery, to talk about how it is that they expose the whiskey to sound waves of Metallica albums, which they say changes the actual taste of the whiskey. And so Rob Dietrich, the master distiller of blackened whiskey, which is um, a blend of straight whiskeys finished in black brandy casks. This is Metallica's whiskey and their master distiller, Rob Dietrich, is going to join us live in the war room next Tuesday night. So if you are a whiskey lover or you're a Metallica fan, you do not want to miss cocktails in the war room next Tuesday night. Super excited about that. Um, Let's see. 
Uh, I have a bottle that I was saving. Okay, I'm in, says Eric. Um, yeah, get your bottles now for next week if you can. Um, the new bottle is the one that has been exposed to the sound waves of s and 2. I believe it's batch 106. So we'll talk to him about that. They're supposed, this is an older batch. This one here is batch 89, um, which I believe was distilled before Rob became the master distiller. Um, they're supposed to be sending me a new bottle, but I don't have it yet. So Metallica, get on it. So um, do not miss, if you got whiskey fans, you know, friends or whatever, make sure you drag them into the war room next week because it is going to be pretty awesome. So that is happening next Tuesday. Um, all right, a couple things I want to remind you guys about. Uh, one of our first Mistress Carrie deals. Once again, I want to thank our friends at Spartan Brews Coffee Company who not only are donating $5 from the sale of every one of their Mistress Carrie purple uh, fleeces to the Massachusetts Military Support Foundation, but they are also giving Mistress Carrie fans 15% off everything that you buy on their website, which is their um, their delicious coffee and all of their merchandise. So if you want 15% off of whatever you buy, just put in the, uh, the promo code Mistress15, all one word, and you are going to get 15% off of whatever you buy, which I thought was really cool. There's also something else that I thought was really cool that I wanted to tell you guys about. I had an amazing conversation with um, the guys at Larkin Mo at the Larkin Motors um, Foundation. So Larkin Motorsports is down in Bridgewater, and they do unbelievable work with cars and trucks and customization. And, and they, uh, through their foundation, which... Uh, is veterans helping veterans because it's a veteran run organization. They are raffling off this amazing 2020 GMC Denali. They're selling 2,500 tickets at a hundred bucks a ticket. So if there's somebody on your shopping list, that's impossible to buy for, um, you can get them one of these raffle tickets. They're going to do the raffle as soon as the last ticket is sold all of the proceeds are going to benefit the Larkin Motors Foundation. And one of the things that they do, the foundation does, because it, it's a nonprofit, is they use the money to help veterans in need, especially when it comes to um, veterans' vehicles. So if there's a veteran that is in financial distress and their vehicle um, is broken down, the foundation will go in and fix it for them. Um, you can go to LarkinMotorsFoundation.org to get more details on the foundation and also to buy one of the raffle tickets. And not only do you get this fully upgraded, customized truck, but you get 30000 in cash if you win the truck as well. And I don't know what any of this stuff right here, I don't know what any of that means. But these are all of the upgrades that have been put in this truck that they have done on top of the brand new truck and the $30,000. So if you are looking to make an amazing donation, which by the way is tax deductible if you buy one of these raffle tickets because it's a charitable donation, um, you can be entered to win that amazing truck and win 30 grand on top of it. All for a $100 uh, raffle ticket, which is also a tax deduction. And as you get towards the end of the year, if your business or your organization or your family is looking for ways to um, contribute to your charitable donation column of your taxes, this is a way to do it. So uh, for anybody that's a gearhead that knows what any of this stuff is, there's video of them with this truck. They did this awesome drone video of them driving this truck around. The truck is amazing. There's another picture down here as well of what the back of the truck looks like, but it is beautiful. So I wanted to thank the guys from Larkin Motors, um, or Motorsports, I should say, and the Larkin Motors Foundation um, for doing what they do to help their fellow veterans, which is amazing. And um, I know we're going to be doing a lot of really cool stuff together. So I was super excited to talk to you guys about um, so there you go. All right. What else do we have to talk about? Let's talk about some music headlines, shall we? If you are a Foo Fighters fan, they released a video. It's about 30 minutes long called Times Like Those. And it's basically all of the guys from the Foo Fighters, um, 
in a movie theater style room with popcorn and everything. And they made this video of them going through old archived video footage and photographs of the band's career from the beginning. This is all in part of celebrating their 25th anniversary as a band and leading up to, of course, the release of their new album, Medicine at Midnight, that comes out in February. If you're a Foo Fighters fan, the video is great. Um, they're all busting each other's balls, telling old stories. It's super candid and it's fantastic. So you got to check it out. It's called Times Like Those. If you listen to last, last week's podcast episode with Morgan Rose, he was hinting his perspective on doing one of those live stream concerts was really funny if you if you heard it, um, because it's basically a Seven Dust concert with no crowd. And so he was talking about it and he was hinting at plans for 2021 and some other things that the band was going to do. Well, they made the announcement um, yesterday that Seven Dust is going to do a live in your living room on January 8th at 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, they're playing live, and they are playing the entire Animosity album in full, back-to-back, -back, plus other songs as well. So if you missed the last live stream Seven Dust concert, you're going to have another chance to see them on um, January 8th. And there's another live stream concert leading up to Christmas that I wanted to tell you guys about. For the first time, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra isn't out on the road during the holidays. And if you've ever seen the show live, it's unbelievable. So on Friday, December 18th at 8 p.m., the Trans-Siberian Orchestra is doing a 90-minute live stream concert to help you get into the holiday spirit. And so you can go to the Seven Dust website and you can go to the TSO website if you want to get details on their live stream. Now, what I thought would be really cool is um, that you can give these live streams as a gift. And one, the other one that I forgot to put up on the screen, KISS is doing KISS 2020 Goodbye. They are doing a live concert. It's in the sit rep today, as a matter of fact. Um, they're doing a live concert on New Year's Eve in Dubai. The concert cost $10 million to put together. They are trying to break the Guinness Book of World Records for the biggest fireworks display, which they are going to do at midnight in Dubai, which I believe is nine hours ahead of us. So you can watch the live Kiss, um, Kissing 2020 Goodbye concert on New Year's Eve as well. And all of these live stream shows, they make a really cool gift for someone that you know is like a diehard Kiss fan, but... Um, you know, if you don't have anything else to buy them, you can buy them a ticket to one of these live shows and then they can watch it streamed. So um, Bon Jovi's doing them. Uh, Kathy says, I got the stream ticket already. That is fantastic. Um, let's see. Uh, Lou wants to know if I have the password for the WAF Big Gig single seat promo. I do not. Um, I believe back when AAF was still on the air, we used 50 rock, I believe as a promo code. I don't know if that one still works or not, but try it and let, let me know if it works. But I believe we were using 50 rock to get a discounted single ticket. Um, which of course this year was supposed to be 50 rock WAF's 50th anniversary, which is where we got it from. Um, so Try that and let me know if it works. I know you guys are going to ask about the big gig. I have no updates for you as to whether or not that show is going to go off without a hitch in April or not at the DCU Center. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that is what is going on with that. Mail call this week. Oh my God, I got the most amazing contribution to the war room this week from Richard Fitz Jr., actually, the gold star son that we were just talking about. So I went to get the mail and it was a package and it was all wrapped up and bubble wrapped and whatever because it's breakable. Um, so in it came this letter that I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I want to read some of it. Um... It says, Dearest Mistress Carrie, well, I must say that this has been quite uh, trying times for everyone and quite frankly, on a personal level as well, 
Many thoughts, plans, and concepts for the future that are slowly slipping away um, and have had uh, been seriously affected or delayed. As if the shutdowns weren't enough, I was faced with the challenge of finding a new location for my, da for my daily furniture restoration business. And of course, in the middle of it had the, quote, pleasure of um, getting a quick bout with COVID. Um, thankfully I was able to shake it off, but the quarantines, it truly left me down and out both behind physically and especially mentally and financially. And truth be told, I'm still a bit disconnected from it all, which is exactly why he's hanging out with us in the war room every week, because that's what it's for. Um, I'm writing to tell you that this gift I am sending along to you was something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, even before you left WAF when you had told me about your war room the day that we did our interview on your side piece podcast at WAF. I think you can understand why I chose this out of all things um, that I could have made up or sent. As you know, this Father's Day letter was sent home to his father. So in case you don't know, Richard Fitz Jr. is a gold star son of Richard Fitz Sr., who was a Green Beret that was missing in action for over 20 years um, he was on a clandestine mission. And so even when he had been confirmed killed in action, uh, it took years for the family to find out exactly what had happened to Richard Fitz senior. Um, Richard Fitz jr. Put together, um, a documentary about the search for information on his father's passing called 21 years of folded flag. And so that is what he's talking about in this letter. As you know, this Father's Day letter was sent home to his father before my father was sent overseas. And if anyone has seen my film knows that we have uh, an actual voice recording of my father reading this letter. This piece is truly the depth of it all, uh, as well as I have uh, the most poignant lines in bold. I hope this means as much to you as it does to me because it's truly well-deserved. Um, I must say a huge thank you, um, to you and your talented friend, Christine Latini of Cre uh, Latini Creative Solutions. She is an absolute sweetheart and such a huge help seeing my thoughts, ideas, and visions come to fruition. So I love the fact that you guys are, uh, getting Latini Creative to help you guys when you have stuff, uh, that you need designed. So the letter talks about a letter that his dad wrote to his grandfather before he left for Vietnam um, or what they thought was Vietnam at the time. And he, they found an audio recording of Richard Fitz Sr. reading this letter. So what he did was he framed his dad's letter to his grandfather for Father's Day. And that is Richard Fitz Sr. And um, I couldn't love this more. I'll read you part of it. Dear Dad, approximately 19 years ago, a young boy left home to join the Army. About eight months later, this same person, only now a young man, came home and gave you what you always wanted, a pair of silver wings. Do you remember? He pinned them on your chest. I'll never forget that night, Dad. I felt closer to you than ever before in my whole life. Do you remember what we said that night? You told the people that you wished that I would award you with my green beret and I wish, and I said uh, you would have to earn it yourself. Well, I tried to find something that you would like for Father's Day and I figured that my green beret would be the best. So here it is. Please take care of it, Dad. It has gone through hell with me and it is worn out. Take it in your hands and squeeze it, Dad, and maybe if you close your eyes, you can see what we went through or where we have been. I don't know if you can. I don't know if I make the beret or the beret makes me, but let me tell you, wherever that beret is, you can see or feel me. I'm going to start crying. This I'm going to read you the whole letter because it's too powerful not to. When you hold that beret in your hands, you hold me because we are a part of each other. I wish I could tell you the places that we have been or the things that we have done, but I can't. 
The best I can do is to send you the beret that has been with me all the way. And maybe you can close your eyes and squeeze it, Dad, and see it all. I don't know. I know if I ever wanted to remember all, I would, uh, I know if I ever wanted to remember, all I would have to do is close my eyes and squeeze it, and I would be able to see it all again. I'm just sorry that I couldn't be there to give this to you in person. I think it would be a hell of a lot easier than this way. Please take care of it, Dad. It's been through more than enough, and I don't want it to go through anymore. Treat it like your own son, Dad. Maybe, believe it or not, the beret you hold in front of you is your son. Happy Father's Day, your loving son, Dick. And of course, we all know that Dick never made it home. Um, it took years after he was killed in action um, for he to be for him to be returned home um, and given the proper homecoming and burial that he deserved. But um, this. I didn't hang it up yet because I wanted to be able to show it to you guys. But this is getting hung up in the war room tonight when we're done with the show. Um, Richard, I love it. I couldn't love it anymore if I tried. Thank you very much. I'm honored and grateful um, that you've given me something so personal and it means the world. So um, thank you. did not bring tissues. I was not prepared for this. Okay. So, um, that is what the war room is all about. This collection of things and stories and people and experiences, which is why when veterans come here, um, and they want to hang out in the war room because it's like being amongst their brothers and sisters in arms. Um, and so that is such a welcome um, addition to this room. And it's amazing. I can't wait for my husband to see that when he gets home. Whew. Okay. Um, if today is your birthday, I have to do something happy and cheery because otherwise I'm just going to start bawling my freaking eyes out. Richard, this is not the first time you've made me cry. Um, if today is your birthday, happy birthday to you. You share it with Pete Best, the original drummer of the Beatles. And also, uh, speaking of Godsmack, Tony Rumbola from Godsmack. So cheers to you guys and happy birthday. Okay. Um, so let's talk about um, mistresscarry.com and the online store. I want to show you guys something else that I had made. Uh, mistresscarry.com is in the final stages of construction. The website's built. All of the products are produced and up in the store at mistresscarry.com and ready to go. I am waiting from the for the final approval from the credit card company um, that is going to process the credit cards before I can put the store up online. Um the goal is to get the store up this week. Obviously, as people start doing all of their holiday shopping and stuff, I want to get the store up this week. And I just don't know exactly when that credit card approval is going to come through, but I know that they put a rush job on it because of the holiday coming up. So I would expect in the next few days, if you keep an eye on all of my uh, social media outlets, which I will put up on the screen for you, I will make the announcement about the website being up and ready to go. So you can find me on Twitter at Mistress Carrie, on Instagram, and obviously on Facebook at Mistress Carrie WAF. Oh, look who finally decided to join us again. Hello. What are you doing? Can I have that? Give me that. Give me that. It's perfect timing, actually, because of what I am going to show you guys. So in the online store, one of the things that you are going to be able to get is a sticker pack. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, t-shirts, hoodies, um, pint glasses, shot glasses, koozies, uh, coffee mugs. There are Christmas ornaments and mouse pads, and there's all kinds of stuff, pens to outfit your home office, and... Wednesday, do you want to, Wednesday, hey, she just took the monkey and she ran. Um, 
this is one of the stickers that you get in the sticker pack. Seriously, like pretty good, but Wednesday is now on the sticker. So, um, the stickers are, I, I just love them. Um, working on these has been super fun. I mean, if I put it like this, like she could probably just host the war room for me. Hi, welcome to cocktails in the war room. I'm Mistress Carrie. Arr. But I think it's super cool. And so this is one of the stickers you get in the sticker pack. Um, I'm really excited about the website. I am going to tell you guys um, right off the bat that the the website, getting it up and running, that's been the hard part. My plan is after the new year, when things get really locked down and really cold, is to fill the website with all of my archive stuff. I've got thousands of photographs and so many videos and so much stuff. I'm in the middle right now of putting all the cocktails in the war room episodes um, up on the website, which this is episode 106. So there's a lot of them. So the website, don't give me any shit at the beginning if it doesn't have everything up there. I'm, I'm working on it and filling it with content. Uh, one of the other things that is going up on the website is uh, an events calendar which is going to have all of my events when we're actually allowed to start having events again. But it's also going to serve as a concert calendar. So when shows get announced, uh, they'll be up on the calendar as well. And all the links and everything to be able to buy tickets, that's all going to be up on the website. Uh, so there's a lot of great stuff coming on the website. And the online store, I am super excited about. I told the people with the Mistress Carrie backstage passes already that... Um, they are going to get 15% off of everything on the website um, until Christmas because they have Mistress Carrie backstage passes. So I want to welcome Heather and Maria, the latest recipients of the Mistress Carrie backstage pass. Um, the people with the backstage pass know a lot about what's been going on with the website because when I'm up late working on the website, I'm posting and I'm sending them pictures and they've seen a lot of the merch already. And so if you don't have a backstage pass or you want to know what it is, which by the way, it makes an awesome gift for somebody that you don't know what to buy them. You can just go to patreon.com slash mistress Carrie and um, you get a backstage look at everything. Uh, you get exclusive pictures and blog posts and I keep you up to date on what's going on with the podcast. And obviously as things grow, you're going to get access to a lot of other great stuff. I'm hoping eventually to be able to have events but one of the other benefits is um, getting discounted merchandise. And so the people with the backstage passes are going to get access to uh, merchandise on sale that nobody else knows about because they have a backstage pass. So as soon as the website goes live, if you have a backstage pass, you're going to get a promo code that's going to give you 15% off of everything you buy until Christmas. So um, who was called? Ah, Michael says you have spoken again and again and again about the difficulty in building the website. What has caused you so much trouble? So here's the thing. I could have done it the easy way, which is to hire a company to design the merchandise for me and to run the online store and fulfill the orders and process everything and to have someone else manage the website and do all of that for me. I chose, because that's my way, to do it the hard way, which was to be involved from the ground up of building the website, of picking out the layout, of making the list of all the features that I wanted, of designing the merchandise and picking out the merchandise myself, and then fulfilling all of the orders myself which means that I have been painstakingly involved in a lot of the things that a lot of people with online stores don't have to deal with, which is the logistics of what happens if you order a t-shirt? How do I get notified that the order came in? How does your credit card get charged? How does the money move around to be able to have me then go in and have the shipping software and the packaging and the weighing of the items and the boxes and how logistically your order online is going to get to the point 
where it's packaged and shipped back out to you again and maintaining the inventory and placing the orders. So it hasn't been just building a website. I mean, there are people, you know, you can go to these online sites and, you know, put in a few hundred bucks and put in some info and it spits out a website for you. But as you guys have known since the start of Cocktails in the War Room and since I left WAF, or since WAF left me, however you want to put it, I have taken this opportunity. To, I want to learn how all of this works. I want to know what these items cost to make. I want to know what goes into designing them. I want to know how they're getting packaged up. I want to know how the website functions on the back end so that I have control over everything that has my name on it. And it's been a really important learning curve for me. Um, and it's been slow. You guys have been through this from the beginning. You guys started with me on March 14th here in the war room when I was talking into my cell phone. And the biggest technological advance I got, which I was super excited about, was getting a tripod and a light. And then getting the software on episode 81 with Mike Shu, where I could put... Um, you know, logos up on the screens and I could bring in guests via Skype and to be able to show you guys pictures and things that we're talking about and read your comments and be able to have a pug cam and all of the stuff, building the studio, picking out all of the equipment, learning how it all worked, designing it, um, you know, with the guys from Image Custom Cases to design the actual furniture in there and RPM Dynamics, getting it all wired, and then getting the podcast up and running, and working with Sully on uh, Sully from Godsmack on the theme music for the podcast and for the War Room, and I have everything has taken um, longer because I didn't want to take a shortcut. I wanted to learn what goes into things because when you're paying companies to build a website for you or fulfill orders for you, if you haven't done it yourself, you don't really understand why things cost what they cost and what things are worth, you know, with your hard-earned money. And so I've wanted to be painstakingly involved. So working with Latini Creative Solutions on all of the artwork, like the War Room artwork that's on the t-shirts and the other artwork and logos and the fonts. I've been involved with everything along the whole process. Jen wants to know, are you personally shipping things? Yes, with a team of volunteers. And by volunteers, I mean family members that I have drafted. Um, but yeah, so in the short term, we're going to do everything in-house. Bigfoot First Productions is going to do everything in-house. If it ever gets to the point, good problem to have, that you guys are buying so much stuff that I can't keep up with it, I'll deal with that then. But starting my own business, this is the first thing that I've done in my adult life that didn't involve WAF, and I wanted to be a part of it from the foundation all the way up. Um, Joshua says, I can't believe it's episode 25 of the podcast already. I know. That's what I mean. When I look back... Sometimes I feel like things are taking too long. Like the website has literally caused me so much stress just because it felt like such a huge daunting undertaking. And because I'm not a computer savvy person per se, um, once I figured out how to put things up on the website and how to, you know, put events on the calendar and put blog posts up and put items up in the store and get the podcast up there and, and load it with pictures. I'm learning all of this stuff, but it has been, it's been a lot. I'm so glad I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it because I'm learning so much and I think it's going to help me make decisions in the future, but I'm not going to lie and say that it hasn't been really difficult and I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't second guessed the decision to just not hire somebody and make them do everything for me. Um, but I really wanted to, now that this is, um, now that this is my job, my full-time job, I wanted to be involved with every aspect of it. And I appreciate all of you guys' patience and I really appreciate the support. This journey has been insane. 
Um, I joke with people all the time. I used to have engineers and imaging people, people that would edit stuff for us, uh, web people, video people, um, social media people at AAF, people that would help us book guests and edit audio and record things. And if something broke, we could just call somebody to fix it. And now I'm learning how to do it all myself. And it is scary for anybody here that is an entrepreneur, anyone here that has started their own business. Um, I was raised in a family owned business, but it was started long before I was born. And there was no social media back then. There was no website back then. It was like you took phone orders and you wrote it down on a piece of paper. And there are just so many moving parts now. And I forget who it was. There have been so many people on the podcast that have talked about it. But one of the quotes that keeps coming up is COVID-19 is giving us an opportunity to come out better than we were before. Because in a lot of instances, we have a lot more downtime. And what we do with that downtime, um, if you choose to take that downtime, and by downtime, I mean, there's no concerts, they're not all, you know, there's no family get togethers, there's no events, there's a lot of things that we would normally be doing that take up a lot of our time that we just can't do. And so I'm choosing to take this downtime and learn a bunch of new skills that when things open back up again, the new normal, to use all of the buzzwords, when concerts come back, when we're able to have events and there's big motorcycle runs and all these other things, I'm going to have a way better working knowledge of how everything that has my name on it functions. So that is the very long-winded answer to your question, Michael. Um, but I really wanted to take the time to explain it to you guys because I know that... Um, it would be very easy to think that there's just this whole team of people, which is what we had at AAF. And I got to tell you, it was fucking awesome having people around when things break and people to solve problems for you and work out logistics and spending company money instead of my own money. But it's been incredibly rewarding. And um, I thought you said you weren't that person. Which person, David? I, I, did I miss a comment? I don't know. Um, let me see. Um, I wish I had downtime. You know what I mean by downtime, that there are a lot of distractions, social activities that we would normally be doing that we just can't. So I'm just trying to take that time to, um, build my company right and learn things. And it's exhausting and Linda says, what's downtime? I know, exactly. I don't have any either. I literally waited outside in line for two hours for a goddamn turkey today. But it's been incredibly enlightening. And it also has given me so much respect for people that are really good at this stuff. If you're a web developer, if you can write code, if you are a computer expert, an IT person, I'm sorry for all the nerd jokes I have said at your expense because the stuff that you guys are able to do and the language that you speak that I still don't understand, um, you guys are amazing. So that is what is going on. And as soon as I get final approval on the website, um, people with the Mistress Carrie Backstage Pass are going to find out about it first and they're going to get the discount codes and then we're going to move forward. The goal after the holidays... Once the website's up and the store's up and running and everything's moving right along, is to start launching something new every month. Um, new products. I know Wednesday has, you know, not only does she have her Instagram and now she has a pug cam, but now she's on her own sticker and she wants a part of the store to be able to have um, pet products on there as well. So that is in development right now. And there's a lot of other really cool stuff that I want to start doing. And to get it all set and ready to go so when we can finally leave the damn house and start doing stuff, that I'm going to be ready to do that too. So seriously. The fact that I'm holding a tangible thing with this image on it after what it took to get it designed and developed and I never thought something as simple as like a sticker would mean so much, but, um, 
when you're involved in it from the beginning, when it's your idea and you work with creative people and you get it, um, and then, and then it's, it's a thing that you can hold and people are going to have, um, I don't know. It's just, it's been amazing. And it's, sometimes I get really hard on myself as the people with the backstage pass know, because I post a lot late at night. Um, I get really upset that things aren't moving fast enough. But then when I think back about where we all were on March 14th, I think back about where I was on February 22nd, that Saturday morning that I woke up after signing off the greatest rock station in the history of radio. And I think about um, my view of the world then and the fear that I had about what I was going to do. And now to be in November... Um, and to be looking at everything that's been accomplished and everything that has happened and everything that we've all been through together in this room, being each other's support and the shoulder to cry on and each other's cheerleaders and each other's focus group and just that group of people that we turn to for better or worse. Uh, I think it's amazing what we've all done together even though it's felt like I've been walking on broken glass for the entire route of the Boston Marathon, but it's pretty awesome. And I'm so grateful that you guys have been along for this ride with me. I can't tell you. Every day I bump into people um, at the gas station, at Dunkin' Donuts, like wherever I bump into people and they're like, I love the war room or I love the podcast or it's good to see you doing so well. And, um, you know, keep the funny posts or, I mean, it's just been, you guys are amazing. And I wouldn't have been able to do any of the stuff that I've done if it wasn't for you guys and your love and support and your belief in me. And, um, I'm really looking forward to 2021. Not because this year, with very few exceptions, has completely sucked out loud, but um, because I'm really excited to see what this new year with the podcast and the company and everything is going to bring for us. And that you guys um, are all on the ride with me, which, I mean, you guys are fucked now. You're basically strapped on a roller coaster and I'm taking you for a ride and I'm not letting you off. So... Scream your hands, scream, scream your head off and put your hands in the air and enjoy the ride. Um, I know, Ed, I can't wait to go to concerts anymore either. Mm. Um, it's just been, it's been crazy. When I think about everything that's happened, everything with COVID, everything with the world, um, the politics, the just everything. Everything that's gone on, I just am like, holy shit. I mean, murder hornets and fucking aliens were confirmed by the Pentagon. And we don't even talk about it because it's like there's so much other crazy stuff that is going on that's like, oh, murder hornets? Oh, um, aliens? Yeah, no big deal. So, just unbelievable. It's awesome. Yes, David, you guys are my ride or die crew. I love that. Um that was actually in the wedding vows with my husband and I calling each other our ride or die. So he's, I tell him the same thing too, that he's on that roller coaster with me and he's stuck with me. So, um, can I ask you guys for one more favor? Um, I found out today that somebody passed away that, um, was an amazing woman She's only 55 years old. Um, she was a very close friend of Scruffy um, and a very close friend to a lot of people. Um, I did a lot of volunteer work with 22 Kill, the Veterans Empowerment Suicide Prevention Organization, and she also um, volunteered for 22 Kill for years. Her name was Stella. The last few years, she had purple hair too. So whenever we would be at a party or an event together, um, you know, people would always make jokes because there were two of us. And Stella passed away unexpectedly over the weekend. And there are so many people in the veterans community 
um, around here that are really hurting right now because she was one of those people that had an infectious laugh. She was a snorter. You know those people when they laugh so hard they snort. She was one of those people. She was always willing to give of her time. She was incredibly generous. She was so sweet and funny and just lit up a room. And um, she is going to be missed more than I think I can say. And it breaks my heart that she isn't here anymore. And so if you guys wouldn't mind, cheers to Stella. She was an amazing lady. And I was honored to know her and work with her. And she um, has made the world a little less bright today for a lot of people. So Stella, we will miss you and thank you for everything that you've done. There are so many people that loved you and um, just thought you were an amazing woman and you definitely made an impact on everybody. So to Stella... I know a lot of my friends that knew Stella better than I um, are really hurting today. And so I want to make sure that uh, we're sending out love to all of them as well because I was a little bit shocked. I didn't know. You know when you find out that someone passed because you see it on Facebook and you're like, wait a minute, what? Like when you see all of your friends changing their profile pictures to somebody and you're like, wait, what's going on? That's what happened today. Um, that's how I found out. And I was just like, wait, wait, what, what is going on? Um, and it just kind of, it just hit me. And it was like, there have just been so many instances, um, like that this year that have made things hard. Um, I wanted to tell you guys one more story actually, um, before I get out of here tonight, because, um, it really hit home for me. So I'm sorry if I'm being long winded tonight, guys, but I, there were so many stories that I wanted to tell you guys tonight. So over the weekend, um, I attended the funeral for an amazing lady who's almost 96. One of my very best friends in the world, someone I've been friends with since high school. Um, who was the youngest in a big Irish Catholic family, um, his mom passed away. And his mom was superwoman in so many ways. She, um, you know, was that woman that was at home worried about her man in World War II. Like I said, she was almost 96 years old when she passed. Um, she was incredibly modern for her time. She had seven of her nine kids and then decided to go back to college and get her degree and became a teacher after starting this huge, amazing family. She was incredibly well-educated, incredibly open-minded, very caring. She was a logistical marvel to run the family the way that she did. She could cook like nobody's business. And she was an amazing, amazing lady. And she lived a life right up until the end that we could just only hope to have for ourselves. So on Saturday, one of her sons did the eulogy. Now, I've known this family my whole life. My mom and my family before me have known this family for years. And she had nine kids and through the generations that's turned into 14 great grandchildren. And a few weeks before she passed, she had the opportunity to meet her 14th great grandchild. The father of this great grandchild, her grandson is the son of one of my friends in the family. Now, this kid, the dad, used to hug my thigh and call me his girlfriend when he was a little kid. He's now like 6'3 and a dad. Fuck my life. That's how old I feel when I see him. Anyway, um, he had a son 
and was able to take his newborn son, even with COVID and everything, um, and very carefully be able to introduce him to his grandmother. And in the eulogy, this story was told, and I thought it was a really pertinent thing to kind of finish the episode tonight. He brings his new baby to meet his grandmother. And this woman, wise beyond her years, was so excited to meet the newest member of this clan, this giant family. And he said, Graham, can you believe that when he graduates from high school, it will be 2038? And knowing what was going on in her life at that point, knowing that she was nearing the end, she was incredibly in control of all of her faculties. She's holding this baby. And this was the story in the, uh, in the eulogy. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And she said, now I can say I've met someone from the future. And I was sitting behind the grandson, the father of this baby in the church when this part of the eulogy came up and I could not stop crying. And every time I have told this story since then, I have not been able to stop crying. And part of the reason why I bring it up is I think everything that we've gone through with this virus, with the lockdowns and especially with the holidays coming up and wanting to be with our families and being sick of the isolation and having financial issues and all of this kind of stuff. I think sometimes we can overlook the fears and the people that we're trying to protect. I mean, it's, we've talked about it so many times in the war, I can't even count. And it really struck me because this family has been so careful to, to really make sure that the, pa- the, the matriarch of the family was protected from the virus as much as they could. And it really struck me in that instance that that's what we're trying to be so careful for, is to give a woman like that the opportunity to meet someone from the future. And I just thought it was this amazing, beautiful, poetic way for this woman in the last days of her life to recognize the end or the near end of her life and the beginning of this new life and to see that it was because of her and to bring her life full circle in those last days. And It was just really, really powerful. And so I would just ask you to just remember that story um, when you get aggravated about the hand sanitizer and the occupancy inside stores and the masks and all of that stuff is in that being careful might allow another person to meet someone from the future. And it was just, it was a really powerful moment for me. And it hit me like a, like a bullet. I mean, it just, it stopped me in my tracks. And it was one of the most beautiful eulogies. Her son did her so proud with this amazing send off. Um, And I just, after it happened, I couldn't wait to come into the war room and tell you guys that story. And I knew that if I didn't, if I talked about it early in the show, I wouldn't make it through the rest of the show because I knew I was going to be a mess because it was so overwhelming for me. But I just wanted you guys to hear that story and to keep that in mind and um, kind of help to keep things in perspective, especially with how stressful everything is right now. So, um, So there you go. Joe, exactly. This is why we have the war room and have the family. Exactly. Um, I love that we have the ability to come in here and talk about stuff and work through things and cry sometimes more than I want to admit um, and laugh about things and be able to joke about things. And um, 
So I couldn't wait to tell you guys that story. So there you go. It's, it's been a week. It's been a serious week. And I really hope that you guys all this week with the holiday are able to celebrate it in some way that you can be with the ones you love in the safest way possible and to be able to find some joy, even if it's not how you normally do things. Um, normally, I put my tree up like the weekend after Thanksgiving, but we're not having a big family extravaganza like we usually do. So, uh, the family members that are inside my little bubble, I think we're going to decorate it after dinner on Thanksgiving just to give us something to do. Uh, the war room, I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but the war room gets its own tree and I collect, um, like military and patriotic Christmas ornaments that go on the war room tree. So next week I will, maybe I'll, uh, grab Wednesday's pug cam and show you guys the tree here in the war room next week. Uh, after we talked to Rob Dietrich, of course, the master distiller for blackened whiskey, which is Metallica's whiskey. Cause he's going to be on the show next week. Whew. So I hope you guys enjoy your holiday. I hope you find a way to make it special and to maybe start new family traditions. Um, I hope you're able to spend it with people that you love and, um, I just hope it's a good day for you. We could all use some more good days than bad days. And I hope your turkey is delicious. Um, I hope also, you know, there were years and years on the air at AAF that I would always say, you know, keep the families of those that are deployed in your thoughts because there's an empty seat at the table um, at Thanksgiving and Christmas. And for the first time since I have been with my husband, um, this is the first year we're not going to be together for the holidays either, um, because he's deployed. So, um, it's a different perspective. And so I know that I'm not the only one that is going to be separated from the people that I love over the holidays. And so I hope you guys are all able to connect with those that you can't physically be with in one way or another. And, um, to really just enjoy the simple things on Thursday. Um, there you go. I think that's it. Whew. Sorry for the crying. I'm going to finish my drink. Uh, thank you guys for all the love. I appreciate all of the Thanksgiving messages and all the love for my husband and, um, keep your eyes on all of my social media pages because the announcement about the website is uh, just days away. As soon as I find out it's definitely happening and we're a go, trust me, I'm not going to be able to contain myself. So please enjoy your Thanksgiving. Defrost your turkey before you fry it so you don't set your house on fire, please. And I will see you guys um, next week. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Okay. I got to get out of here. I got stuff to do. I had a website to build. Don't forget episode 25 of the Mistress Carrie podcast goes live at midnight featuring the one and only Scruffy Wallace. All right. Good night, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. I love you.